Yo, 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 everybody, this is your host, Dave, and you're now tuning in to The Scoop. All right, welcome back, everybody, and this is another episode of The Scoop. Today with me, Stephen Cow. What's up, guys? And we just rocked out an awesome back routine. You guys will get to see that, so make sure to check us out at uh, bpisports.com, and uh, you'll be seeing those updates on the trainer soon. Um, so pretty much, let me go into introducing Stephen to you guys uh, a long time ago. He moved down here to Florida. Uh, I guess we ran into each other after a high school dance around this time, Halloween-ish. And uh, he got beat up by a bunch of guys dressed as a skeleton. And I came in, <laughs> saved the day, saved and, the day. <laughs> and uh, that's how we wrapped it up. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. That's the intro to Karate Kid. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, we met not too long ago, actually. I, I had actually left, and I came back, and I mean, your third guest I've had on here, so oh, yeah. this nice. is actually pretty awesome, so Exciting. I'm glad we got to do that together, but um, let's get into it. Let's break down some cool stuff for some of the fans. That way they can see, from your point of view, what it is to be a sponsored athlete, You know, mm -hmm. someone who's competing, yeah. uh, someone who's winning <laughs> and competing, and, uh, you know, pretty much the base is off social media. I mean, yeah. I, I, I follow you, so I think you're crushing it. And I wish my social media game was as strong. So uh, hopefully we can get some answers for some of these guys out here. Mm. Um, pretty much, what'd you do before becoming an athlete? Like Before, like, actually, like, competing and everything? Before, uh, like, yeah, before you competed? Like, what, what was my was life your, like? Yeah, okay, what so, were you up to? Basically, like from like sixteen to twenty, well, sixteen to twenty-one, because I started competing when I was twenty-one years old. But nice. that whole time, I was always in the gym training. I, I actually never dieted until I was twenty-one. I kind of was just, you know, just ate everything. Just train. <laughs> like for me, I fell in love with the training first. Like that was the, like to this day, I would always be in the gym training if it, even if I weren't an athlete or whatever. So I just started training since I was like, well, I started when I was fifteen, all the way to twenty-one. Basically, gotcha. bulked. My whole entire life, I was like, one. I was like the smaller kid in high school, 105, yeah. 110, skinny, could barely eat everything, could barely put on weight. So um, when I was 21 years old, uh, I had to get surgery because I get, had to get a hernia replacement. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I had a friend, my friend Darren, he was competing for a physique. It was like new, newer at the time. Yeah. So then I went to the show to watch like how, how it works. And um, I just saw some of the guys, I'm just like, damn, I feel like I can definitely do well at this, you know? So, like, I was recovering from surgery at the time, like, yeah. while I went to the show. And then um, I think a few months after that, I I decided to do a show. So I was like, you know, I'm just recovering from surgery, getting back into the gym. So, like, let me just do a show. So hired my coach, Coach Ariel, and uh, from there we – Went ahead and did a 16 week prep. It's the first time ever, you know, dieting. Yeah. Keep in mind. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. everything was new to me. So, I mean, I was always disciplined as a kid. So, like, when I was sent a game plan to do, like, just to execute, it wasn't that hard for me to do. But, nice. you know, I did suffer. That was my first, like, oh, everybody does. Yeah. It was, but it was my first taste of actually, like, suffering for a show, or whatever. But then um, from there, you know, I did that show and, I got hooked, man. I mean, I'm I'm fresh into my diet, and yeah. there comes that time where I got to eat that turkey meal, and it's just like pain in yeah, my yeah. mouth. It's yeah. like straight punching me in the face every bite. So I, yeah. I get it, um, which I would like to say for everybody who's listening, yeah. I mean, they heard it straight from your mouth. Yeah. You know, it was at 15. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a buck oh five. Yeah. I mean, you look flawless now. I mean, everybody's seen the ads, seen what you look like and all your work. Yeah. So you kept up with it. You stayed dedicated to it. Mm. And obviously you seeked advice from a coach, a trainer, somebody to help you out. Yeah. And now you're here. So yeah. that's that. I mean, that's proof to everybody out there. You know, if you really want to get it done, you can. Yeah. Um, and, and stay focused, you yeah. know, keep grinding. Um, aside from that, uh, now, as now that you're here in this mm -hmm. part of the league, would you say, are you just running on your sponsorship do you work like what's what's involved with your daily life now do yeah, you just so now I'm, i mean i have the sponsorships here with bpi i'm okay. also working with like gymshark trifecta so i have a few sponsorships that nice. i work with but aside from that i run my own like online coaching business um just 
coaching athletes that awesome. want to do competition or just people that just want to get in shape, just anybody that just has a goal. Yeah. They reach out to me. Like, I don't really like just pinpoint a certain group of people. Like, oh, I only coach athletes that compete. Gotcha. I kind of work with anyone. So that way I, I'm just like diverse. Like just in my head, I know I can get anyone in shape if it comes down to it. So That's awesome. now I'm just doing like online coaching. I have some business partners in China that I'm doing business with there. So awesome. I mean, look at that. Uh, Perfect example. I yeah. mean, you got bodybuilding down licked, you know, you're running on Instagram, you you got, you know, that entrepreneur drive as well too. So you're covering all bases. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I know some people, you know, you look out at to their page and you're like, this is all that person got, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're modeling and it's, you know, what are you going to do next? Yeah. You know I, what I'm saying? Like, I, I just what? think, I just think as a person, you know, you just got to really expand and grow. Like mm -hmm. it's just, I feel like just, training and doing all that that's that's kind of easy in a sense mm -hmm. but like to expand yourself as a person just trying to like explore other ventures gotcha i think you grow so much as a person you know well that's what i like to see because obviously you know a lot of people probably look at you and go this guy lives in the gym and mm. and, and it may be true because you know nine hours out of the day when you're not sleeping you're either probably cooking running lifting training somebody mm. but obviously the training portion is part of your one of your jobs yeah um again and i'm sure you work really hard with the rest of the companies that you work close to mm. and you know people need to realize that like some people already set their minds that the goal is not doable they cannot accomplish it because yeah, yeah. they need x amount of dollars or x amount of this and mm -hmm. you know you went from saying I'm 105. Yeah. Uh, I went to a show. I liked it. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you did it. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. these people are just throwing in all these equations without even looking to it. So yeah. again, that's good that you got to speak out, especially for the younger crowd to let yeah. them know. No, I think it's, it's super important. Even like in, with like my generation, the kids in my generation, like, it's just the work ethic that you really got to put in because everything, everybody wants everything easy now, you know? Yeah. Nobody wants to go do the work, go through the suffering and go the extra mile. They <sighs> they want things easy. They want to just be Instagram models and just, you know, have it easy. But I just think the key root is just the work ethic that you have to put in. I got you. I got you on that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so you we were talking about your first show. Yeah. Um, how was that? Was that your first show? Was it your first win? First show ever. So basically I went to the show, you know, I prepped 16 weeks straight yeah. and um what category what, were you? I was still in physique, still physique. physique. So okay. I go in there, I see people eating like rice cakes, you know, eating out of Tupperware. I'm like, should I be doing that too? <laughs> I, I feel like I should be doing that, you know. But like this is like just me, just everything's so new to me. So yeah. I go in there. Let me ask you something. You see these people eating, obviously you've been prepping. I mean, mm. I'm pretty sure you're starving. How did you feel like in that moment? Like when you saw all that like where you like like in my head I, I feel like i was not doing something right because okay. obviously like i'm not sure how a show works you yeah, know of course but obviously i stuck to the game plan that my coach um sent to me and everything <laughs> and then um i mean it, the show went well you know i i managed to win um my novice class i won the overall novice and then i won the open class and then i won the open and overall for the whole show too so nice so yeah. your first show was your first win yeah yeah dang how many people were there would you say? Because I know physique is huge. I mean, it, you go was, to the shows, they're they're stacked. Uh, I think in my class, it could be up to like maybe... I'm not exactly sure how many people were in my class, but yeah. the whole show itself, maybe up to maybe 40, 60 guys. Wow. And um, in the overall... But you took overall. Yeah. Got First show, overall. overall yeah. Smoked them. Yeah. But like going in there, you know, I, I kind of thought in my head, like, I'm not sure how I'm going to do, you know? But yeah. I always had this like confidence in my training and just like my work ethic that I just knew like... If I train this way, like, I know I'm going to do okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be okay or do well. So, like, when they um, put me in the first quad and everything and I was dead center, that's when I knew I was going to win the class. But then for the overalls, it's kind of like you're not going to know because they're going to judge you. And then within that minute, they're going to yeah. let you know who's going to win. So when they called me for the overall, I was just kind of like, wow. And then I remember waiting backstage because – when you're in the overall, like all the like bikini overall, bodybuilding overall, they all go together to take a photo. So I had to wait until like yeah. the show was over. And I remember just sitting there backstage and I was like, damn, man, I feel like I can do something with this sport. You know, like, yeah, you know, this is where I knew, like, I feel like I got to put all my eggs into this basket now. Okay. Like, so then from there, I kind of rebounded after the first show. You know, I just didn't know how the system worked to go pro. Yeah. Because basically you have to qualify at a local show, which I did. Mm -hmm. And then you go to to nationals yeah 
But then um, after that first show, I was, I was talking to my coach. I was like, how, how do I go pro? Because he always suggested you should do junior nationals. But I kind of just overlooked it because financially, I wasn't really there. Yeah, shows are, yeah. Our, shows are yeah. expensive. And at the time, I was um, I was a bouncer at a nightclub. Nice. I was working in Atlantic City. I wasn't making that much money. I was just working like weekends. <laughs> I was still a student too. I was still in school as a- Full grind. Full, full grind. grind. I was prepping. Yeah, I was prepping for a show while I was taking some classes. And then uh, I was working the weekends too. So like, I remember- I almost had like I, when I did my first national show, I almost had a mental breakdown. I was like, "Wow, man, this shit is fucking hard," you know. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. But from there, I just kind of just like sucked it up and just kept pushing through. But you know, like in the end, I just always had this vision. Like I really didn't have any other outlet. So like in my head, I was just like, "I just gotta go all in with this." Like I, I have no choice here, you know. <laughs> Damn, that's pretty crazy. Because you went on, you did your first show, you won, and I mean. Like, you know, usually some people, I, yeah, I get it. Some people do win their first show or whatever the case is. And, but then they have that, like, that hunger, which yeah, you yeah. had. You were mm. you were seeking what's next. Like, yeah. I need to win a pro show. Yeah. So when did you take on the pro show? Like, when was that jump? When I got pro or when yeah. I got to when, pro? Well, when you started competing in, in to go pro, like. Yeah, so after the first show in my head, you know, I was on cloud nine. I was just like, wow, like, I had so much fun. But, like. I already did the show, so like, what's next? You almost have like no destination after that. So from there, I just started planning. I was like, let me try nationals, you know? Like, let me put the same work ethic into the show. I know what it takes to win a show, so let's implement that into like a national show. But I, I just knew like the competition was gonna be that much more. I'm going against other guys that won overalls too. Yeah. You know, now it's just like who's gonna take 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 on yeah, nationals. Guys coming point. from out of state and yeah, yeah, and, and competition you just never seen before. Mm -hmm. You know. So how was that? Like, so did so, you compete in multiple shows before you won your pro card? I did. I, I only did one local show in my life. And then okay. from there, I did a total of three national shows. It took me three national shows to, to, um, to, win. to go pro. So the first national show, I got sixth place. And then, you know, I was in the first call out. So I was in like, I was one of the top guys. Yeah. But I definitely, my posing, all that, you know, it's my second time on stage. So from there, I kind of um, took a little break. Then I went to Miami. I okay. got fifth place there. It still made the first call out. So I'm like, I'm getting closer and closer. Yeah. Took a little bit, like a little bit of a longer break. And then I went to junior nationals. And then from there, with the mentality I had going to there was just like, I'm going to go into that show looking like a pro. Like I have to look like a pro. Like the only way you could beat me is you have to look like a pro. <laughs> yeah. So like just in my head, I just had that like, just kind of like stoned in. I was just like, all right, let me train this way. Let me try to look this way and um, from there, I managed to win the um, the overall at okay. nationals, at junior nationals, and then. Uh, Dang, that's awesome! It was. I mean, it was, it was crazy. This, this is down here in Miami. It was. It was in Chicago. Oh, Chicago. actually, Chicago. Yeah, hey, that's, yeah. that's my city. Yeah. Congratulations! Now I know you're certified in the hood. <laughs> so we know we all know that down there. So, um, so we got pretty much Miami covered. We got yeah, Atlantic yeah. City covered. We got Chicago covered. So I mean, aside from everything else you're accomplishing, everybody knows. Stephen Cowell's hood certified, all hoods. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll vouch for that. <laughs> but um, what would you say the overcoming part was? I remember you said, you know, you hit sixth and you hit fifth and then boom, you showed up and you wrecked the scene and you were like, I'm not going in until, you know, I'm, you know, 110% yeah. dialed in, 100. I, and yeah. I, I just wanted to know, like, what was it that you worked on probably the most? What changed? Like, was it your diet? Was it your posing? Or was it just like an all around? It was more of like, at this point, you know, this is where I'm like more of like an athlete. You know, this okay. is where I started getting the sponsorships. Um, I stopped oh, working my up. nighttime job. I kind of stopped going to school. Nice. I just told myself like, this is my job now. Like I kind of just to still like, yo, like if I'm going to be doing this, I have all the tools right now to go pro. You know, I have the supplement just sponsor. Full dedication. Uh, yeah, full dedication mode. So then from there, it was just also like learning my body too during the process of all the other national shows because, you know, it's the first time I ever died, it was my first show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just only having three shows under my belt, going into that fourth one where I turned pro, it helped me a lot just learning mm -hmm. about my body. And then um, just to prep for junior nationals, I, I kind of got it down how my body was responding to certain foods and the cardio training. So yeah. I had a whole system kind of – I was up training up to two times a day some of the days because – I, I, I treat you like a full-time job, you of know? Of course, of course. Uh, yeah, now you're free and yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, you're just bringing a whole new package. Mm -hmm. um, you recently, you you had an uh, entry for what? Arnold or the Olympia? I did. Did you compete in both? Or? I did. Well, I this is what happened. I uh, Once I turned pro, two weeks okay. following that, I did my pro debut. 
just to see where I stand. You know, I didn't okay. really go in with the mentality of winning just because, yeah. you know, I just got fresh off of a win in uh, Chicago. So I was just like, I'm still in shape. My coach was like, just jump into the show. And, um, you know, even like 10 days out, I even went out drinking at a bar just to celebrate the win, you know, <laughs> but I knew I was you competing. Gotta celebrate. Yeah. I knew I was competing in 10 days. So like just going, to, cause I had to fly out to Cali and, uh, from there I did the show. I, I ended up taking fourth place there. So then, nice. um, after that I had another hernia, so I had to get the oh, opposite side, um, fixed. And, Dang. you know, I was pretty depressed in a way. Cause I was like, damn, it's got my pro card. I got to sit out for the next eight weeks. So then I just remember like. If I come back, I'm going to set the bar high. So I was like, let me do the Arnold, Arnold Classic. So that was like the second pro show I ever did. Nice. And then um, I did like a, it was a 16-week prep for that show. And then um, I remember I told my coach, I was like, I want to do the Arnold. And at first he was kind of like, I like he's not going to doubt me, but I can sense that he was in a way like, you sure you want to do this? It's kind of like a like the big show. Yeah. So then from there, I was like, yeah, like I want to do that show. And then I went ahead and did a full prep for that and I guess from taking that break from the surgery, my body just responded really well to the training, the diet and everything. Two and then surgeries. Two surgeries, yeah. And then just going to the Arnold, um, it, it was the best I ever looked in my life for that, like just for yeah. out of all my shows. So just I just had that confidence boost, but I, I wasn't sure how I was going to do because, you know, I'm going against some, they're all Olympians yeah. that are in the top. Because in the first qual, I'm, I, it was weird how it worked. If you watch the video, yeah. they called five guys out so then in my head i was like damn man i didn't make the cut this time so just yeah i, I kind of shook five. it off you're in the, but then, in the first five yeah and then like 20 seconds after they called out the top five they called me out so in there i'm like wow i'm in this now so then it was just <laughs> exciting because remember how i told you my friend darren competed um his first show yeah the pro level andre ferguson was competing there so then so, at this show, I'm competing against him. So it, it was super cool to see that. Dang. So then um, at that show, I, I ended up getting sixth, which was like a huge accomplishment for me, just being like yeah. my second show and just the competition. Yeah. And from there, you know, I'm just just hungry for more, you know. Yeah. So pretty much in, in, in you know, just putting this all down on paper and, and reviewing it, you know, it doesn't matter whether you win your first show, second, third, whatever the case is, mm -hmm. you know, just like everything in this sport, it's pretty much the saying, you know, it's not a sprint. This mm -hmm. is a marathon. Like what? for someone like yourself, you're a pro mm -hmm. and you're still reaching for that level that just, yeah. you know, you're pushing yourself way beyond. Yeah. So that, you know, I, I want people who listen in to take from that because, you know, you're, you're getting so many things done and accomplished and you've undergone I mean, two surgeries. Mm. I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're working through all of this. You still work. I mean, the dedication it takes, a lot of people need to understand that. Yeah. And it's, it's really hard because it's like you said, you, you, you train multiple people, whether they're trying to compete mm. or just lose weight or gain weight. Yeah. So you know how hard it is. You know, yeah, we yeah. can't open their mouths and tell them, please eat this yeah, yeah, or yeah. please don't eat that. Or, you know, I said you could have this for a cheat meal and, you know, you ate half a cake and you're like, dude, <laughs> like, I get it was buy one, get one, but yeah. come on, you know, give, yeah, give yeah. one away. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I just want people to understand, like, you know, this is, it's still a dream and to make it a reality, people such as yourself who's on a pro card level have to still grind it out yeah you, you know you really it, it really comes down to like how bad do you really want it you know because even this year i can even give you an example um i went to chicago did the mm -hmm. chicago pro um i didn't do too well there i got like i think 14th uh, like 11th or 14th or something like that okay i was in that range and um my coach was gonna pull the plug and say hey man let's just take off and let's try to grow more but initially my whole game plan that i wanted to do was the tampa pro Okay. So I went ahead, like regardless of what he was going to do, I told him, I was like, hey, man, I want to do the Tampa Pro. So then that was like four weeks after Chicago. And then um, at that show, um, I, I did okay. I got third place there. At Tampa. But my, the win for me was um, the top five guys in Chicago from second place to fifth or second place to sixth, they all showed up in Tampa. And I was Ooh. able to place higher than them. So that was the yeah. win for me. But like, say I say I gave up and like just took that break and um, didn't know I would have all these unanswered questions like, do I need to be bigger? Like, yeah. th like just based off of the 
the judging, it looked like the guys were bigger. That's what my coach was saying. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't the case. Because in, in Tampa, too, it's the head judges. We had like Steve Weinberger, Tyler Mannion, the guys that mm -hmm. judged the, uh, the Olympia, you know? Yeah, so for me, that was like more valuable. And it was a learning lesson for me, too, you know? Because yeah. in Chicago, I, I feel like my peak wasn't that great. And I knew I wasn't at my best in Chicago. So it was so difficult for me to just <laughs> end the season in Chicago and just like not knowing how well I could have done. So, so just... I just, if I were to say anything, just never give up on yourself and just always believe in yourself. Because even nationals, you know, it took me three national shows to yeah. go pro. But, you know, I couldn't have gave up after like two of them. I'm just like, wow, this is too tough. You know, let's try to find something different, you know? Yeah. So you obviously, you know, your, your first few times around, you mentioned like when you first started dieting, you know, you had like the mental breakdown and, and, and I, ex I know exactly what that feels like. Like mm -hmm. I've, I've marched around my kitchen, like looking in the cabinets like, as if there was something there, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, it's almost to the point where like, I'm checking my girl's purse, not on like, if she's like cheating on me, like a guy's <laughs> numbers in there, I'll just throw it out. I'm like, there has to be a cookie or something in here. You know what I mean? Like it, it's at that point, like where I'm just losing it. But yeah. in, in reality, what is it at this point? Cause you know, I, a lot of people, again, they, they, they second guess this. That, I mean, they, they must feel like, you know, this guy's on top of the world. Everything's a given. Like, they have to understand, like, is there a specific motivation? Is there a specific drive that just keeps you locked in? Like, like I said, you know, we, we went out there, we trained, we hit back. And, and I explained to you, you know, there's some people that can get out there and do it. They'll do eight weeks. And it's like... Mm -hmm a revenge eight weeks. I'm, I'm going to work out and lose 15 pounds to get back at my ex-girlfriend. Like, dude, come on. Like, where are you going to go? That's, that's not, that's not the mentality to succeed or win. Yeah, I yeah. mean, let alone, you're not going to get her back. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? <laughs> if Steve Cow's following her on Instagram, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, you're finished. <laughs> or if she follows him, just wrap it up. But no, I'm just playing. I hope I don't get you in trouble for that. But, um, what, what is it? Like, what's, what's, Personally, what is your motivation? Like, is there just something that fuels you that you're like, you know what, you know, off the books, this is something I do because outside of the love, the passion of it, like, it's just, just something that you are like, I want to prove them wrong. Like, I mean, for me, it's just, I mean, I always have the passion to train, so I'm always okay. going to train for me, but then also having a goal with the training helps, but I think it's just curiosity of my potential, you know, like, yeah. I know, like I I always hear of, like people saying oh, you have great genetics and you have great potential and stuff but for me it's it's up to me to do the work to see that you know people can sit here and say hey like you could be Mr. Olympia one day or you could be like a top pro one day I could hear this but it, it's it comes down to me to do yeah. it you know so like I guess that's kind of like the driving force and also just having a lot I just seen a lot of the feedback I get from um just like my fans and the audience like they have like a lot of belief in me. Okay. So like, I want to kind of, kind of like just prove to them that I can do it, but then also have the same, the same people that would doubt me too. Like, I mean, just even when I was trying to go pro, I was pushing out YouTube videos, series and stuff. And I'll read some of the comments and say, Hey, this guy could never go pro. Like he's, you know, too small or whatever. So in a way it's just kind of just that, that a lot, I get motivation from a lot of things. So all hmm. that kind of just motivates me. Ah, you know, man, haters are going to hate. I mean, Instagram's <laughs> full of them. I mean, you know. Yeah. I, but like, I, I never really let, let that get to my head in any sort of way. But just just in general, just I just feel like my potential, just my peak potential, what can I really do in the sport, you know? That's what's up. Yeah. I mean, what, what what's your end goal? Do you, do you see yourself going to an Olympia and just cleaning house? I mean, my, my first goal now is, you know, obviously win a – big pro show maybe like a new york pro pittsburgh pro arnold classic That's what I'm talking and about. then from there you know set the goal even higher to place top five at the olympia win an olympia you know like i really so like you to, line it up yeah i, I kind of make it more realistic for myself because i know i can win a pro show you know it just yeah. it just comes down to the game plan going into it you know yeah but then from there i, I can't just sit here and be like oh well i'm tr i'm gonna try to win the olympia <laughs> next year when i haven't even won like a pro show yet i got you I got so you. i like to set the goals kind of small and then just work off there you know is there anyone that you like look forward to competing against like you just mentioned to me about your buddy um is there somebody out there that you're like not only do i want to compete against this person i want to beat this person like there's a few guys you know like yeah. 
Andre Ferguson, you know, he's a top pro and he's won a lot of pro shows. So he's yeah. really known as like a top competitor. Um, Brandon Hendrickson, I competed against him in China. You know, I actually okay. went up to China to try to compete yeah. against him to see how that was going to go. But, you know, the flight and all that was just disastrous. But <laughs> just any of the top guys, to be honest, that I really want to match up with. Yeah, the top well. guys at their best. I just want to see where, <laughs> what I can do yeah. coming at my best, you know? I mean, I, I mean, you know, obviously my word, who knows how far it goes, but yeah. I, I, man, I, I honestly, I think you got it. I think you look phenomenal. Anybody tries to say you look small. I mean, they're absolutely dead wrong. Um, we had a killer workout. I mean, yeah. killer tips, the breakdown, everything that you've given out to all the fans and anybody who's listening. I mean, they hear, they see your story. I mean, if this is something they want to pursue, I mean, who better? Yeah, who yeah. better? You know what I mean? Like, you, coming out of high school, being a buckle five, and then you know, <laughs> stepping on stage. And I mean, I love when you told me that you had ten days out for that other pro show, and you hit the bar. Yeah. I was like, man, this guy's a I, I badass. Just had, I just had to, man. I, mean, I was just with all my friends, <laughs> and uh, there's just bar, and I think it's in, uh, I think in Brigantine area, Lang City area. Okay, and it's just like every Wednesday, it's like a big reunion with like a lot of people that you go to high school with. Yeah, college kids are there, so it's just like you know, I've been on prep for so long, you know, going to, chasing the pro card. So when I got that pro card, I was just like, let me just celebrate a little bit, <laughs> take some shots, and then get back on my grind because I, I just know like how, just like with dieting, you know, one day of bad eating isn't really gonna make or break you. Same, yeah. So like, same thing goes with like if you were gonna go out one night. But then, like, for example, in, like, four weeks, that's about, like, 28 days. If yeah. you have one day where you have a cheat meal or one bad day, that's not really going to hinder you that much, yeah. you know? So I kind of just put that into perspective and just just knew myself, like, you know, I just got to celebrate a little yeah. bit, you know? Two, two questions on that, on those comments right there. Um, one, what was the drink of choice when you went out that night? Got some tequila. <laughs> oh, God, I can't party with this guy. Um, second would be... Do you ever feel whenever sometimes a cheat meal is granted that people, you know, take advantage of it? Like I have one buddy who's like, yeah, I got a cheat meal. And I always remind him, dude, it's a cheat meal, not a cheat day. Mm -hmm. But this guy is like, I got to get the ice cream with the cake and then the yeah. large pizza. But the pizza comes with the wings and the pasta. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you ordered the NFL package. Like you went to the buffet. Basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, you can't eat all that, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. how are you going to eat your next meal in two hours? I mean, you know, your pants are about to pop. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, do you feel like some people sometimes misinterpret that and then that catches up to them? I, I just feel like they, they kind of misunderstand the concept of a cheat meal because I feel like a cheat meal is really to kind of replenish you from being in deficit. So if you're in deficit for so long, yeah. that cheat meal is supposed to kind of just ramp your metabolism up, keep you kind of full, keep your leptin levels <laughs> like, you know, in check. So, yeah. you know... Because at the end of the day, you're still chasing a goal. You know what I'm saying? Of course. So if the cheat's too big, it can even bring you back even more, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've experienced that before too where, you know, first time dieting, had a cheat meal, went all out, got the pizza, got the... Yeah. Even before I even started like a prep for a show. Did you I even get to your next meal after you did the insane cheat well, meal? Well, this like is what I would do. I mean, if I knew I was going to cheat the whole day, yeah. I would kind of just not eat my other meals and just work <laughs> around the meals. You okay. know what I'm saying? I'll have a day you. where I'll, I'll be like, okay, I'll have this, maybe like three meals, but it's like bigger size. And they're like, like at the end of the day, the totally calorie intake would maybe, maybe be like 3000 still nice. like the slightly surplus, but be more of like the choices I want, you know? Okay. But like, that's how I would do it if I were to do that, it'd go that way. But I want to go ahead and eat like five of my actual meals and then throw in like the full buffet after that. Cause <laughs> that, that would just be like overkill, you know? I feel you. I feel you on that. I, I think that's, I, you know, again, I think that's very important. <laughs> um, you know, obviously coming mm -hmm. from you as well too. So everybody will take that piece of advice. And uh, while we're on the subject of advice, any advice to any up and comers out there who are, you know, seeking to do something, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's to pursue bodybuilding, I mean, now's the time, you know, if anybody wants to hear from straight entrepreneur, I mean, physique model <laughs> and bodybuilder, cause he, he fits the criteria for both. Um, and all around, Badass, cool guy. I mean, I appreciate that. Who man. doesn't want to go out, drink with a guy that has a six pack, get on stage in 10 days, <laughs> and, uh, you know, make make things happen? You know, he's making business moves. So, 
any advice you want to share with any of the fans or anybody you can say out there, just anything, the smallest bit that'll help. Yeah, I would say if you're trying to, you know, compete for a show, invest into a coach, which would basically be investing to yourself. Um, if you're trying to build like a social media platform, you know, start a YouTube channel. I mean, for me, at first, it was kind of difficult getting out of my comfort zone. You know, yeah. you're talking in front of a camera and it's so new to you, but it's just it's just something you just got to do because at the end of the day, like you can build the best like physique you can possibly do. But if nobody knows you or knows your story, there's no like story behind it, you know? Yeah. So like initially, like for me, how I kind of blew up with my social media was like, I created a transformation video from when I was 16 to 21. Okay. And um, this is when I was prepping for the first show that yeah. I was telling you about where I won the overall. So as I was prepping for that show, I was like, I was creating this video, but I was like, I got to do something to make this video really pop. So like, let me try to win the show and then throw this in the video. And then I went ahead and did all that. Nice. And um, that video managed to get up to, I think, 3 million views now. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it kind of just kickstarted my YouTube. And then people wanted to see more. How do you train? How do you eat? What do you do? Yeah. And then from there, I was like, damn, I, I got to do like a series going to nationals now. So that's what I went ahead and did. But for me, to be honest, like, I was really uncomfortable being behind a camera <laughs> yeah. at first. You know, I was still, I was really introverted and shy. So it was still new <laughs> to me. But I would just say, you know, get out of your comfort zone and just, just take all the risks you can. You know, if you're young, you know, like you'll learn from it, you know. So even if you're even older, just keep taking risks because I feel yeah. like it's always going to be a lesson that you'll learn from like the experience. That's one thing I also talk about in the trainer. I always say, get yourself out of your comfort zone and it'll lead you somewhere great. Um, again, speaking of great, it was awesome having you here, Steven. Appreciate that. Man. Um, again, man, I wish you come back. I would love to have you on another podcast. Uh, maybe this one will be talked about more drinking and partying than <laughs> getting lean and suffering on a diet. But yeah. aside from that, guys, thank you for tuning in. Steven Cow in the house, shredded to the T, and tune in. Tune in to Let's the next check time. Check it out. See you guys. Awesome.